I keep priorities are very simple. I think they've been set very clearly right from the beginning. Uh, we're a developing economy. We have a very ambitious transformation agenda, which means that we require heavy investment both from the local and foreign investment. So the whole idea of refocusing this ministry and expanding the mandate of this ministry to make sure that we have a ministry that is proactively going out to attract investment into the country. And when I talk about attracting investment, I'm talking about expansion program in the country. I'm talking about foreign investments coming to the country, both from foreigners, both from the diaspora, and also looking at other ways of unlocking capital within the system itself. Um, and the reason for that is very clear. We have a program that expects that we will invest about 35 trillion within the next four years. Uh, about 15 trillion of that has to come from the private sector. Uh, we know we have the opportunities here. We know we have the market here. We know we have the raw materials here. And the idea is to make sure that we have the policies and the laws that are investor friendly that make it a lot easier for both local and international investors to invest in our economy. So that is one of the primary mandates of this ministry. And of course, we continue to enhance and look at trade and trade also. Now, trade as, as defined by different people, but there's a loose, uh, uh, tight definition, but we are looking at this from a broad perspective. And part of that involves not just increasing the volume of trade, but also using that as a way of addressing our import uh, substitution problem. So for example, uh, we export crude oil and cocoa to the United Kingdom. Yes, we want to do more trade in that sector, but I want to encourage the United Kingdom companies and investors through the Ministry of Trade and uh, Investment in the United Kingdom to get some of those companies, refining companies in the UK, to come here, set up their refineries in this country, where they can actually turn, use the crude oil which is here, we have the cheap labor here, produce petroleum products in this country, produce uh, uh, fertilizers in this country, and have Africa as a ready market for them. Uh, they will make more money doing that. So we want to use that as, as, as not just looking at trade as in terms of volume, looking at that, but also using that to deal with some of our programs and right. yeah, initiatives in the country. Okay, you just engaged the private sector in Nigeria in an interactive session. What, are, what were the key priorities, or should I say, the um, major things that came out of this interaction? Um, a lot of good things came out of it. The, the first thing was that the attendance was fantastic. I, I couldn't ask for more. And these are real people who invest in the economy, who have significant investment, whether they're local or international investors. Now, so the attendance was very encouraging. The second thing was it was an opportunity for the Minister of Foreign Affairs and I to have a joint session to try and address the business community, to talk to them about how we intend to involve them going forward. So one of the key announcements of policy shift here is to make sure that on all foreign trips that we actively involve the business community, actively, meaning that in advance they're part of the planning process, they, we know who is going, we have the names and bios of who is going with us, we know the sort of businesses that like us to organize for them in those, on those foreign trips, we make sure we have a business forum or business meetings around such presidential trips, for example. That's one of the areas we all agreed we need to work together on. Uh, there are other areas where, where they go abroad, the foreign affairs is there for them, it's there to support them, even when they want to invest abroad. Uh, so the idea is to say, look, this is going to be a partnership between the government and the private sector. They have a big role to play in expanding our businesses in this country. They have a big role to play in attracting foreign investment. They have a big role to play in policy shaping, in policy formulation. We want to seek their views so that we make sure that our policies and our laws are very friend, uh, investor friendly. All right. Obviously, Nigeria is competing with many other markets for investment. And what do you say to foreign investors who are looking to bring money to Nigeria? What incentives do you have for them right now? Look, money follows money. So the first thing is that are there opportunities in this country? And the answer is yes. Can they make bigger returns in this country? Of course, yes. Capital is flowing away from the developing economies to what they call dynamic emerging markets. They mean Brazil and the others. Now there's a need for diversification in their portfolio. There's a need for them to make returns. And Nigeria offers them. So the first thing is that money for this money. There's opportunity. There are opportunities in this country. Secondly, as a business plan, and this is uh, coming from my discussions with a number of investors in this country, there are four areas to look at when you're looking at investment. 
and you're looking at, do I have the capital to invest in this? Country? Of course, after establishing that the opportunities are there, do I have the capital to invest in this country? Do I have the technology to invest in this country? Is there a market in this country? And where will I get the raw materials? Capital, technology, you can move from country to country. It's, it's mobile. Raw materials, you cannot move. Market, you cannot move. And we have those two in abundance, with 150 million people, a growing middle class, that where you have big appetite for consumer, uh, for, you know, consumer market, if you want to uh, define it that way, where almost all the raw materials are available. We have almost 65 million hectares of land available for cultivation. Only half of that is used. We have 33 different solid minerals in commercial quantities. We have gas in abundance. We have oil in abundance, crude oil in abundance. We have all the materials. The, the weather is great. So there's no reason why we shouldn't be able to compete with any of the competitors here. Right, Minister, you've obviously highlighted things that, should I say, are somewhat obvious. Everyone knows the potential of Nigeria. But the big question is, um, delivering on the potential and obviously the government has to lead that to some extent. What are the key, should I say, should I say top priorities right now that you may want to announce in terms of policies that um, might excite investors at this time? One of the things that came out from here today for example is not that we don't have investor friendly policies. We already, you can bring in your capital into this country, filling your CCI, you take your capital away and you're in profit away. We have investor-friendly policy, even as I speak to you. What we haven't done well is making sure that we make them public enough to make sure that there's one place where investors can go to, understand, know the incentives that are in place, understand the rules and laws, so make it very, very open and clear to everybody, and that we're working on. We're going to put everything on the website. We're working on which some of our partners to have a, 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 a publication on all the uh, incentives that are available today. The second thing, government is there to create an enabling environment in terms of policies, in terms of laws. We are, we are, and we're doing everything we can to do that. In terms of competitiveness, if you go even by the World Economic Forum Index, already we're setting up a competitiveness council to make sure we drive that, make, it, make sure that our ranking goes up over the years. So we, we are taking deliberate action here. This is not about potential anymore. I think you should stop talking about Nigeria having the potential. We're, I'm not interested in the potential. It is now realizing that potential. And I think we are at a point of inflection where it is now about realizing. I don't want to talk about the potential anymore. It's about realization.